The big move covers the little move. The big move covers the little move. As I've been saying all along and have been saying for three years, that the big move covers the middle, the little move regarding Seth Rich murder mystery. Right? And what is that big move? The big move is that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians in the Mueller report. You saw Robert Mueller, three years of invest, two years of investigation, investigating the Donald on conspiracy to collude with the Russians to hack the election. Uh, that's the big story, right? And uh, and he, co- he he obstructed justice in, in our investigation, our oh-so-important investigation into the Russians. That's the big move covering the little move, which is, again, the Seth Rich murder mystery and the ties to WikiLeaks is really the essence of what the big move covers because the, the little move that it covers is it involves espionage. It involves the possible murder of a DNC employee, Seth Rich. It involves election fraud. It involves deep, deep quid pro quo corruption within the Democratic, at the time, Democratic Party, all the way up to the present, right? But we're going to look, let's look at some of the details because there's new evidence out, and it's actually new old evidence, and it's from, comes to us, by way of uh, Bill Benny. Actually, it's it's a post uh, by a, an attorney who did a FOIA report, Ty Clevenger's. Let's take a look at this. And then um, <clears throat> we're going to look at a lot of stuff. We'll look at uh, all of the, all the video footage. This will be a kind of like a, a summation of the Seth Rich murder mystery. Some of the new spin that's coming out in his hometown of Omaha. We'll look at, we'll look at uh, Julian Assange in his own words where he said it with uh, Megyn Kelly on Fox and with, um, what is it, uh, Sean Hannity as well. So we'll look at all this video. We'll look at Bill Benny especially because this is, this is, really, this is really good stuff. And we'll look at the Mueller report too. So, so here's, here's uh, Bill Benny, right? We're going to look at, we're going to watch a video of Bill Benny doing an interview with this gentleman. And uh, he, tells us, he tells us what we need to know. He tells us the truth. We'll look at the truth first, and then we'll work backwards to the to the fiction. Right? So about six months ago, a blog post, Publis Tactias, appeared regarding attorney uh, Ty Clevenger's FOIA request regarding Seth Rich. Quote, But now there is new information that may corroborate that the human sources quoted in the Fox article claim that Seth's role in getting the DNC documents to WikiLeaks Born from a FOIA request filed in November 2017 by attorney Ty Clavenger, who requested any information regarding Seth Rich and Julian Assange, the NSA informed Clavenger in a letter dated October 4, 2018. That was about a year ago, a little over a year ago. And here's what the NSA told him. Your request has been processed under the provisions of the FOIA. 15 documents, 32 pages responsive to your request have been reviewed by this agency as required by the FOIA and have found to be currently and properly classified in accordance with Executive Order 13526. These documents meet the criteria for classification as set forth in subparagraph blah, 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 and remain classified, top secret, and secret. Wow. Whoa. So that confirms the NSA, the almighty NSA, has confirmed that 32 pages exist that are classified, right? That, that, it, that Seth Rich was, in fact, in contact with WikiLeaks. That's, that's the whole shit right there, right? And you remember that, that uh, there's also there's also a, a, some FBI agent that allegedly told the family, or the fam, you know, the fam, he told the family that the FBI had saw WikiLeaks data on Seth Rich's computer that we've never seen, and that it confirmed that he was he was in communication with WikiLeaks, and then the parents confirmed that. We'll look at the parents as well. 
But that's big. So let's look at, let's listen to uh, Bill Benny describe this stuff in his own words. And, and what we're talking about for everyone who's watching this is that there were emails that were downloaded directly yep. from the DNC server, according to you and the work and those people you just spoke about, to a thumb drive. Yep. There was an arrest or uh, some sort of indictment that was put out by Mueller a year and a half ago saying that there were 15 GRUs, um, and I'm sure that's something related to Russia, and all uh, these military Russians. Military intelligence, yeah. Mil just before, before we go on, if you don't know who Bill Benny is, Bill Benny is a retired NSA employee for 40 years. He, he, this guy's a code cracker, and he's the uh, founder of um, uh, whistleblower.org. He's, uh, he's, he's very, um, very believable, very um, credible. He's been in many shows and talked about it. So he's a 40-year expert on, on NSA uh, uh, protocol, right? He worked there. Military intelligence. <laughs> and um, you can tell I'm not a military guy. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the, and that they broke in through a phishing expedition of some kind and downloaded the emails, but not by going in and directly pulling them down from the DNC server. So is that correct? And that's absolutely false. So there, he debunks the whole theory, the whole Russia theory. We'll go back and look at the Mueller report, what Mueller said. Bill Benny is debunking in its entirety the theory that the Russians hacked the DNC servers. In its entirety. He just did it. Right. Um, you can clearly tell from the, uh, from the uh, posted data, uh, the DNC posted data that WikiLeaks had, that the, there's a property there called FAT, the file allocation table uh, format, uh, which means that when you're reading things to a storage device, the software rounds off the last modified time to the nearest even number. So, I mean, uh, there's a random probability of it not being right. I mean, it's like one chance in two to the 500th power, <laughs> which means like uh, you have one chance of this being wrong in a 10 followed by 150 zeros. So it's impossible. So, without, without any question, yeah. they had to have been downloaded. And when you say reading, basically meaning taking the information from the DNC server, downloading it to a thumb drive, right. and it's proven because there's 500 emails and every one of them ends in a positive, um, uh, even number. Yeah. So what that the summation of that is that the Russia probe, Mueller's probe, says that that the DNC was hacked from abroad. It was hacked remotely. The, 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 the Russians took over the computer computers and started to extract the information. That is patently false. Bill Benny says it's a trillion to one chance that his theory is it based on on the data that they saw is inaccurate that it was almost it is a 100% chance that it was a download someone takes a hard drive take a hard drive you stick it in the computer you download the data and you pull the hard drive back out you put it in your pocket you walk out the door only someone who worked there only someone who was in the building only someone who a had access and knew what they were looking at could have done that, right? It's not a, it is not, right? So it rules out the, the, the idea of just based on that little data alone is rules out the, the whole theory of a Russian hack. And further, that it, it also, the, the communications between Seth Rich and WikiLeaks, whatever they were saying, that, that they were in fact in contact. And then the, and the theory is that, that Seth Rich got the hard, got that uh, thumb drive to WikiLeaks, right? That the fact that documents exist, the communications between Seth Rich and WikiLeaks. The only way that could possibly have happened is if they were downloaded. Right, and, and actually to be cor absolutely correct, it can be downloaded from any computer connected to the high-speed network of the DNC. And anyone so watching this can Google that file. Yep. Yeah. F A T sure. yeah. file and see yeah, this. And anybody with a computer background <laughs> will know this. Um, yep. I have no computer background, and I read it, and I think I understand it. Um, you actually put something out there online to show people how to do it, but to to to, to see the exact emails because all the WikiLeaks emails are out there. They're in the public yeah. domain, meaning yep. the emails that were downloaded. So 
we know that in the Mueller report, there is a lie. There yep. is an absolute lie. That uh, the, there's a number of lies. Okay. Let's look at some of the lies. Right? So here's, here's the Mueller report, right? This is what they're talking about. Uh, we'll read it, and then we'll, we'll continue with that report. As reports uh, uh, attributing the DNC and the DCCC hacks to the Russian government emerged, WikiLeaks and Assange made several public statements apparently designed to obscure the source of the materials that WikiLeaks was releasing. The file transfer evidence described above and other information uncovered during the investigation discredited WikiLeaks' claims about the source of the material that is posted. Uh, so the, the, the references, the references that Mueller is making is to these indictments here by the uh, made on uh, July uh, July 13 2018 about the alleged 14 Russians that swooped in from abroad and hacked the DNC right and those defendants starting with net Yakos uh, he was the king he was the the leader all of them are not someone said that they're accused of uh, uh, meddling through Facebook, Facebook ads. No, these are actual, a, an indictment for actual hacking of the DNC, right? Uh, the, the, the unit 26165 and primary responsible for hacking the DNC and, and DCCC. The next guy, same thing, co-conspirator targeting the, targeting the computers and the emails, all, all uh, espionage charges, right? So that's that's what Mueller is is pointing to. That evidence is based on those that that fictional lie, right? The other thing that we wouldn't be able to, to know any of this stuff if the NSA provided it to Mueller because it would be classified. We wouldn't be even even able to see it. So again, they took Mueller took his information from a third party, CrowdStrike. Right? They, they barely say it. I think there's one mention in a footnote, but they don't say it specifically where they got this information from. They just you know, say, oh, we have it. And, and it. But if they did have it from a reliable source, then it would have been classified. But here's what Mueller concluded. Beginning in, in the summer of 2016, Assange and WikiLeaks made a number of statements about Seth Rich. All of Mueller's stuff here is relying on on public statements that Assange made. That's it. They never interviewed him. They never talked to him. They never requested his presence at, at, in Congress. Nothing. Right? It's amazing, right? This is, is it's, it's a shit sandwich, right? On August, um, the statements about Rich implied falsely that he had been the source of, of the stolen, let me start again. Beginning in September, in, in the summer of 2016, Assange and WikiLeaks made a number of statements about Seth Rich, a former DNC staff, staff member who was killed in July 2016. July 10, 2016. The statements about Rich implied falsely that he had been the source of the stolen DNC emails. On August 9, 2016, uh, uh, the WikiLeaks Twitter account posted. WikiLeaks decided to issue a $20,000 reward for information leading to the conviction of murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich. Likewise, on August 25th, 2016, Assange was interviewed, asked in an interview. This is the Megyn Kelly Fox News interview. I'll play that for you. We, we could play that. We could see that right here. It's, 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 it's. 30 seconds, let's watch Tonight, he's answering more questions about that mysterious murder of a DNC staffer. Here's a sneak peek. There was also speculation about whether your source was inside the DNC and whether it, it may have potentially been a man named Seth Rich who was killed, he was shot. Why are you so interested in Seth Rich's killer? We're very interested in anything that might be a threat to alleged WikiLeaks sources. I'm just asking you explicitly whether you whether you believe somebody, you know, connected with the DNC or somebody upset about the leak may have been behind it. And then they cut it off, right? So so that's that's the that's what's that's the interview that Mueller is leaning on, the public interview. Um 
we were very interested, right? The interview responded to Assange's statement by co commenting, I don't, I, I know you don't want to reveal your sources. Okay, so that's the interview. It's, it's, it's footnoted in the, in the report. 181, murder, page 49, murdered DNC staffer was potential WikiLeaks source, Fox News, Megyn Kelly. All right, so there it is. All right. What they don't look at is the, is the real one on Dutch television. That's this one right here. We'll look at it. All right, but let's get back to Mueller's final. All right, so, so that's it. After the U.S. intelligence community publicly announced its assessment that, the Russia, that Russia was behind a hacking operation, Assange continued to deny that the Clinton materials released by WikiLeaks had come from Russian hacking. No, there's, no, there's, right, there's, no, there's no testimony. There's no admission of guilt on Assange's part. So there's nothing. It's it's pure, it's pure speculation, right? It's pure speculation on the part of did Assange was was Assange not was Seth Seth Rich not the source of Assange's dump? Of course he was. According to the media reports, Assange told the U.S. congressman that DNC hack was an inside job. All right, so let's get back to Bill Benny. Okay. And a number of uh, disinformation, for example, the idea that uh, the impression they're giving is that this is government information like, like from NSA. Here's how they got in. Uh, and that data is not from NSA because if it's NSA data, it's classified and they have to redact it. Uh, how? If it's, if it's NSA, and it has to, it's classified and it has to be redacted. It's not redacted. We saw it. Right? They revealed it. Otherwise, they're in violation of uh, espionage laws and laws governing classification and protection of classified material. So and the only one who's classified. Yeah. I'm yeah sorry, well, I think they're getting it from a third party like CrowdStrike. So, I mean, you know, this is tainted material that can't be introduced in a court of law because you have no, they had no, no continuous control of the evidence. I mean, it was, they never got the server, first of all, and they were only given data by these people who were running that server. And so, therefore, they have no continuous control of the data. How can you enter that in a court of law and say it isn't tainted? You know? So, March, April, May, information is, is uh, flowing out of the DNC, right? That the, the emails are being, quote, hacked or, or interfered with. And then the DNC, about May or June, discovers, discovers this, quote, discovers it, and then gets CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike to come in and fudge the record. That's what Bill Benny's talking about. He's he's saying that a a third party came in, hired by the DNC. The DNC hired these people to come in, rather than giving over, to, handing the the DNC servers over to law enforcement, saying, oh "My God, we've been hacked." They gave it to CrowdStrike, the you know the savviness of the Clintons and and Robbie Mook and John Podesta, you know the scheming liars, the the con men, right? Um, to to create this this other story, this this uh, electronic story of a Guccifer and a DNC leak. So, so the I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I feel like Sean Hannity right now yeah. interrupting <laughs> you. Uh, but um, and, and I apologize for that. But I I'm just trying to make sure that I understand this. So yep. the information that is in this Mueller report, because he did do an indictment of these people. There's nothing yep. to back it up. It's just out of nowhere. The Mueller team decided to indict 15 Russians and claim something, but they have nothing to support their claims. And they also based it, uh, they used Guccifer 2 as a basis for that. And we can prove that Guccifer 2 is a fraud and a fabrication. Most of the time stamping we found internally in the data that was being used by, or posted by Guccifer 2 shows that it's originating somewhere in the United States on the East Coast Central Time and one, one case on the West Coast. So, you know, that, that's a total fabrication, and he's basing that in D.C. leaks on, on, on that, uh, uh, in that indictment as a fundamental evidence they're using. That's crazy. How, how sloppy. And, and before we began this phone call, you mentioned something about a lawyer who did a FOIA request. Can you yes. explain that? <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, Ty Clemen Clemens or Clevenger? I, th I think you said Ty Clevenger. Yeah, Ty, Ty Clevenger. He uh, FOIA'd uh, information from NSA asking for any data that involved both uh, Seth Rich and also Julian Assange. And they responded by saying, we've got 15 files, uh, 32 pages, but they're all classified in accordance with the Executive Order 13, 1, 13526. 
governing classification, and therefore you can't have them. Uh, but that says that NSA has communications, records of communications between Seth Rich and Julian Assange. I mean, that's the only business that NSA is in, copying communication between people and devices. So any communication that happens, yep. uh, they're collecting. They collected this, and they said it's top secret or secret, and it's therefore it, can, it is classified. Yep. I don't Everything understand this, sir. I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I, ha I have a personal interest in this story, but I don't understand how our government or the Mueller report can so blatantly <coughs> lie just flat out lie and people are going to accept this. And that's why I think this interview that I did with yeah. you is so important. So that's, that's pretty powerful stuff, right? So that's the expert from the NSA confirming that in his mind that, that the, the emails, that the whole Mueller story is, is uh, falsified. Now let's, let's go, let's go on, right? So what else we have? So we saw the Mueller, the Mueller report pages 36 through 48 talking about these Russian hackers, all this bullshit about the Russian hackers who hacked the DNC. It's all fake, right? It's piled on a pile of shit, right? So does the, does the, uh, the government would never lie, right? They would never lie to us. I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's it like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Like uh, Pompeo. It, uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. <laughs> we stole. We lied, we cheated, we stole. Right? So, they, so, so does the government lie to us? Of course they lie to us. Let's look at, uh, let's look at um, Assange in his own words again. He needs... A miracle. Um, in the American political lexicon, there's such a thing as the October surprise. The stuff that you're sitting on, uh, is, is an October surprise in there? So what we're going to hear again, so, so Mueller re pointed to an interview that happened uh, with Megyn Kelly on July 25th, 2016. Now, a full, f full, uh, I'm sorry, um, August, August 25th, 2016. But on August 9th, Assange gave a much more thorough uh, interview to the public with his Dutch, uh, this Dutch television show. And he gave more details. How come Mueller didn't, didn't cite that? How come Mueller only cited the half-ass, you know, tongue-in-cheek interview with Mag and Kelly, but he didn't look at the real thing where Assange was like, Seth Rich, watch. We Do you even know what you're sitting on? WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, the, the other thing I want to say about WikiLeaks never sits on material, uh, the, the, the idea that, that Assange held on to Podesta's emails for a reason of, of holding on to something and dumping it later is not really correct. Sometimes he, they're not... WikiLeaks has a 100% uh, track record of being right. They've never been proven wrong. They've never taken a document, delivered it to the public, and, and, and it was proven to be fake. All their documents are real, and sometimes that requires making sure that they got the right stuff, right? So sometimes it takes the verification of the document. We might view it as sitting on material, but they might be viewing it as we're, we're not quite sure if it's real or not, so let's just wait it out. Uh, whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27-year-old who uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un unknown reasons as he was walking down the street in Washington. So that was, that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So uh, that's what are you the suggesting? sort of... What are you suggesting? What? I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks and they are they become concerned uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean, we don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot we, in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are uh, in the United States and that our sources are 
you know, our sources face serious risks. Uh, that's why they come to us, so we can protect uh, their anonymity. Uh, but it's quite something and, to suggest a murder. You know, that's basically what you're doing. Well, that others have have suggested that uh, we are investigating to understand uh, what happened uh, in that situation with Seth Rich. I think it is uh, a concerning situation. I, there's not a conclusion yet. We wouldn't be willing to um, state a conclusion, but we are concerned about it. And more importantly, um, a variety of WikiLeaks sources are concerned when that kind of thing happens. So now that we know, now that we know that Seth Rich, in, in, in conjunction to that interview, right, now we know for sure that 15 documents, 32 pages that were foiled from the NSA had communications between Assange and Wikileaks, but between Assange and Seth Rich, that they were in fact in communication. Now when you watch that interview, he's, he's, you have background. You know that they were in, 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 if we're to believe the NSA at all in the FOIA request, why would, the, why would, why would a lawyer FOIA the NSA and the NSA say, oh, yeah, yeah, we got documents. Why, if you wanted to cover it up, you would say, no, we don't have documents. So maybe the NSA is not covering it up. It's, it's, it's Mueller and his, and his witch hunt. Right. So what else we got here? So let's look, at, um, let's look at the family. This is interesting. The family of Seth Rich. Oh, the poor family, right? Um, and what we learned from Kelsey, he was talking to her um, she heard some noise on the phone. She said, are you okay? Are you home? He said, the panda, things that people have noticed that he was, the panda had some kind of esoteric value. The brother busting out laughing, you're going you're gonna to see. Very calm. This is two days after Seth Rich is murdered. They're very calm, cool, collected. You're going to see the father mouth the words. It's very well rehearsed, right? Coached by DNC, you know, um, handlers. He says, yeah, I'm home, and then it's, I have to call you back, and we don't know what happened there, except he ended up. You could see the eyes are moving around the room. All their eyes are moving around the room. They got coaches. They probably run through, ran a script. Shot twice in the back, and uh, was, they said he was talking to the officers when they first got there. He was maybe stable when he got to the hospital, and then things went bad, and bullets in, shot twice in the back. Then it's, I have to call you back. This is he says, yeah, I'm home. And then it's, I have to call you back. And we don't know what happened there. So the girlfriend, girlfriend, he's talking to the girlfriend on the phone, and he says, I'm home. I have to call you back. But the, th the story is that he was shot on the street. So how is he shot on the street? And, he, and the girlfriend says, he's home. I got to call you back. It says, too many holes in the story. We don't know exactly where he was. We've never seen his computer. We've never seen his phone. We've never seen an autopsy, no ballistic reports, no follow-ups on the investigation, no suspects, no suspects with all the cameras in Washington, D.C., two guys shoot you in the street, no suspects? Come on. No video, no witnesses, no innocent bystanders, no, no nothing. There's nothing, no report at the, at the there's that, that one um, doctor allegedly, a, 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 a anonymous doctor reported on Seth Rich being one of the Seth Rich doctors. Who knows if that's true? Probably not, right? Let's continue. So, so the father just contradicted himself by, but he revealed information about what he was talking about with the girlfriend on the phone, and the girlfriend confirms that he was home. He was in his house. He wasn't out on no street in D.C. Except he ended up shot twice in the back and uh, was, they said he was talking to the officers when they first got there. He was maybe stable when he got to the hospital and then things went bad and bullets and people don't match well. He had bruising on his face. He had bruising... Watch this again. Watch this. Watch the father's mouth. Mouth the words. Watch this. Hospital, and then things watch went closer. bad. And bullets and people don't match well. He had bruising on his face. He 
You see the father mouth the words? He had bruising on his face. Let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. Slow it down. Baby stable when he got to the hospital and then things went bad and bullets and people don't match well. He had bruising on his face. He had bruising. Right? You saw it, right? You saw him say he had bruising on his face as if he's reading a script along with his wife. Uh, that doesn't make sense either. Right? So, so that's some of the spin, Hannity. Can you say to the American people unequivocally that you did not get this information about the DNC, John Podesta's emails? Can you? Let me just make the point on the family. I, may, I, fa I failed to make the point. The, the point is that if a family is so comfortable in the story it suggests that maybe he's not dead. Maybe there was a deal cut where he took off out the door. That's still, you know, again, no autopsy. There's no, there's a tombstone in, in, in Nebraska where he's from, right, Omaha. But there's no, do we have to dig up, dig, get a shovel out and find out? We don't know. We don't know if that's, if there's anybody in there. But the, the, the possibility that the family that they were made a deal that they couldn't refuse. And they thought that the kid was let out the back door. Oh, yeah, he's, he's fine. He's in Israel, right? There is a possibility. Is still a possibility because we don't have a body. Nobody saw the guy dead, right? So, so that, that's all. So Hannity. You tell the American, see, John Podesta, you did not get this information from people unequivocally that... You did not get this information about the DNC, John Podesta's emails. Can you tell the American people a thousand percent you did not get it from Russia or yes. anybody associated with Russia? We, we can say, um, we have said uh, repeatedly uh, over the last two months uh, that our source uh, is not the Russian government uh, and it is not a state party. Who do you believe? Can you, you say believe? to the American people. <laughs> do you believe that guy? Or do you believe this guy? We lied, we cheated, we steal stole. Director, we lied, we cheated, we steal stole. Who is the CIA director? We lied, we cheated, we steal stole. Uh, who do you believe? You believe a guy? Like, so uh, Julian Assange right now is in jail. Ah, what a deep dive that was. I hope you could guys could follow along. So we learned a couple of new things about the, uh, you know, Seth Rich, the, the, the very, very mysterious murder of Seth Rich. Was he the DNC leak? All of the evidence goes leans in the direction that, yes, he was the leak and that it was, in fact, a leak and that there was no Russian collusion whatsoever. We know that there was no Russian collusion. We know that there was no obstruction of Trump. And we know also now that it is becoming clear that there was no Russian hack. Now, that, I mean, that, it, it, just think about, again, two years, two and a half years of mainstream media and CIA pumping the mainstream media with false narratives about Russia, you know, hacking the election. That's the little move that they want you to forget because the DNC got caught cheating. They cheated Bernie Sanders. They got caught and, and, and Julian Assange systematically released those emails to the public. All of mainstream media was reporting on it at the time as the emails were coming in, in addition to independent media. So Julian Assange, despite what some people are saying, I don't know how you could deny it, had enormous influence, enormous uh, sway in the 2016 election by not, not so much discrediting Hillary Clinton, but telling the truth about Hillary Clinton, who Hillary Clinton was, how they, how they organized this coup of American democracy, where she was going to be the appointed president because she had the right ties inside of the, the, the uh, you know, the, the, the apparatus, the national apparatus, the FBI, the CIA. Right? That's what it revealed. Right? And <clears throat> Julian Assange, an award-winning, you know, publisher, right, he, he told us the secrets about, 
about the uh, war crimes that the Americans were committing in Afghanistan and uh, and Iraq. I mean, this 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 uh, there's so many revelations that uh, Assange has offered the public. He's the hero, and the the liars and the the uh, people that unfortunately get elected in this country are the villains, and that's that's really what the story of Seth Rich is about. So to to understand that Seth Rich was in fact the DNC leak, now confirm that there was in fact communications between him and WikiLeaks. And there's on, on the record evidence of Julian Assange stating that the Russians didn't give me shit. Right? The only missing link now is that is this, that if Julian Assange can produce the 32 pages of 15 documents that the NSA has, right? If he could produce those, those communication chains then when we we will have confirmed unequivocally that that is that Seth Rich was the source. Right? That's all Assange has to do is re, is release that information so that we know that the information at the NSA, although they'll never, and, or if Trump wants to, you know, if Trump gives a shit, which he probably doesn't, if he even gives a shit anymore, right, and wants to do the right thing, he can declassify that information, that simple information. That debunks the whole hack story. The whole thing goes up in smoke. Marcus Conti reporting. Kindly become a Patreon of this channel. Hope I didn't go on too long. Wow. And um, buy some stickers on eBay uh, if you want to make a one-time contribution. That's how, that's how I keep this thing going. That's how I stay afloat. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. You too is... You, you too. <laughs> YouTube is the... Is, uh, unsubscribing people so make sure that you resubscribe uh where are we here we are subscribe marcus conte reporting